that's called AV block, atrioventricular block, when the signals don't communicate from top chambers to bottom chambers and you have prolonged pauses, it can cause you to pass out, it can cause you to have a seizure, it can cause you to have cardiac arrest. Um, so she presented under those circumstances and <clears throat> in the past, the only treatment for that is, is a pacemaker. Um, and so that's the path that, that she's heading down. Um, but we talked uh, at, at length with the parents about Okay, here are our options. Um, and so what's new in the world today is cardioneuroablation. Um, and that is a, a procedure that allows um, rewiring of the heart to let those signals that are telling the heart to beat to communicate down to the lower chambers and create a pulse as it should. And so it was a lots of lengthy discussion with the parents, but ultimately decided, you know, here are options. We can put a pacemaker in, or we can do a procedure to try to avoid a, a pacemaker, and, and that's where we ended up. And, uh, and it's just a, a wonderful, wonderful outcome for her, because if you think about a five-year-old child who needs a pacemaker, um, that means opening, surgically opening her chest. Um, sewing wires onto her heart, connecting that up to a pacemaker, and then implanting the pacemaker in, into her abdomen. Uh, big procedure by itself, but also <clears throat> um, those wires are going to need replaced someday. The pacemaker is going to need replaced periodically, and those are going to involve further surgeries, and it's going to tie her to a pacemaker doctor for the rest of her life. Um, all that in a five-year-old child. And so to to have an option that avoids all of that is such a welcome change in the tools we have available to, to care for these kind of rhythm problems. Um, it's, it's, I can't overstate the impact that this will have on her life. How common is this procedure? The procedure is rare. Um, <clears throat> there are very few hospitals in the country doing the procedure right now. So it's brand new. It's been being done for 25 years or so outside of the United States, but it's just now starting to infiltrate into this country. It is frustrating because any other place she would have gotten a pacemaker. Um, but I also know that 10 years from now, this is going to be the standard of care. Um, that so many kids are going to be able to avoid pacemakers who right now would be getting them. But it also doesn't prevent us from doing it later on. So patients who already have a pacemaker would be a candidate to have this done to be able to get the pacemaker out. Um, is this possible to do for adults too? Who Absolutely. Might, who have pacemakers? Yeah, and, and it's felt that probably the ideal patient candidates are in the 20 to 40 year old age range. Um, so it can be in, done in adults. If you're beyond 60, generally uh, there's, there's less optimism for it. Uh, but under 60, with this kind of problem, um, catheter ablation, cardioneuroablation, or CNA, would be the, the first option. Now, the part that connects the, the top to the bottom chambers, the electrical wire, if you will, uh, is very specific and it lives in a, an exact spot in the heart. And we can find that, identify where that is and record it in the cath lab. And, and that's the area that we want to protect. But that's not the problem area. The problem area are the, the other areas of the heart that respond to the nervous signals coming from the brain. There's a nerve coming from the brain that tells the heart to slow down. And sometimes that signal is too great, or sometimes the heart's response to a normal signal is too aggressive. And, and when that happens, the heart rate slows down too much. And when it happens, it tells the normal wire, don't let that signal through, don't let that signal through. And that's an inappropriate message. And so what we're looking for is not the normal wire in the heart. We're looking for those areas of the heart that respond to that nervous impulse from the brain. And that's what we cauterize, which is um, very remote from the heart's normal wire. Um, and we can reproduce what she's doing. We can see, you know, on the floor on telemetry while we're monitoring her rhythm that her heart rate's going along just fine. And then all of a sudden poof, it stops and then it wakes back up again. In the cath lab, we can reproduce that same situation. 
by putting a, a catheter up in her neck and we put the catheter right against that nerve that goes from the brain to the heart and stimulate that nerve and watch the heart just stop. Um, and so that gives us our baseline. And then we look around in the heart recording tens of thousands of electrical signals from inside the heart to find those areas of the heart that are responsive to that nerve and we cauterize those areas. And after we do one, then we stimulate the nerve again. Um, there are four primary areas that that <clears throat> control it all and we don't cauterize them all we cauterize as many as we need to so we cauterized one and she was much much better not completely normal yet and so then we cauterized the second area and re-stimulated the vagus nerve and after that couldn't get the heart rate to slow down at all in, in response to stimulating the vagus nerve and so at that point we know okay we're, we're done 